Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to be looking at a huge possible trade. Now, normally I would have like rumor sites and some insiders that are saying that this is going to happen and all of those sort of things like that. But today we're looking, we're speculating more than anything, but it's a very interesting speculation. And it's been something that has been talked by insiders for a very long time, but they're not talking about it right now because we have the trade deadline coming up and so on and so forth like that. Uh, we have looked at Marc-Andre Fleury being traded at the deadline. Uh, we just did a JT Miller one. We did Claude Giroux. Go check out and sub up and check out all of those fine trade things. We're getting lots of volume on it. People are watching it like crazy. But if you notice, people do watch them like crazy. But there's not as much subscribers. Subscribers really helps out the channel for us to be able to continue giving you this fine programming. Uh, you can also talk about this trade I'm going to talk about. By the way, it's Mitchell Marner. Ooh, exciting, right? We're going to look at Mitchell Marner as a possibility. But you can talk about this live at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, as you see on the bottom there. I do that from 3.30 to 5.30, three, four days a week, when I feel like at a clock, pretty much. But I'll send you out a notification if you're a subscriber, and you'll be able to come on and tell me all about what you think about what I'm saying. This is what it's most important. I want to know what you think. I Am I a professional or whatever, or am I a expert i suppose what's an expert i'm a guy who watches a crap loads of hockey i read a crap load of hockey and i make a logical assumption or a logical thought process towards what may happen because of what we see in front of us now the toronto maple Leafs. uh the big talk here and i've been asked this a lot and this has been asked a lot through many many places that i go to but nobody really has an answer to it and maybe we don't either, but there could be. What if they miss the playoffs again? Or what if they lose in the playoffs in the first round, not miss the playoffs? They're doing fantastic. But what if they lose in the first round again? Right now they would play the Tampa Bay Lightning, and it's a very good possible, very possible that they could lose to the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're having problems in goaltending with Campbell and Morazic. Uh, defense, their, their overall team defense seems to always do well, but... Their actual defensemen are a little iffy, a little young with Lilligren, Sandine, who I think are going to be very good, but are maybe not there yet. They're probably going to try to add at the deadline, and I did some videos where they do try to add at the deadline, like Sherratt and so on and so forth like that. But is it possible that this is the year that they realize that these big contracts, they just can't get the depth to do it? There's a lot of talk on either side. They're going to keep on doing what they're doing, keep on trying to add cheap players and keep on doing that. But how long do you keep on doing what you're doing and realizing it ain't working, right? And how long is Dubas going to be able to do this before they say, you know what, we run out of time here. We're going to go a different direction. So I would explore the idea that they do have to trade one of their big contracts. And that one big contract is Marner. Now, after the playoffs last year, I talked in the uh, Toronto boards on Facebook and many of the other places, and everybody was trading Marner. He's not good enough. He's not a playoff guy. And I imagine there's many of people out there that still feel the same way. If he did, And if he doesn't really produce very well again in the playoffs now, maybe they got to look this direction. You understand? So I don't have my normal... Friedman quotes or something like this for this. I'm just looking at straight, logical possibility, what it would look like. Do you think it would be a good idea? And if it's your team, would you do it? So let's first look at Mr. Marner himself and what he is as a player, how much he's making, and all of those sort of things like that. He's from Markham, Ontario, Canada. So I know, like, he's a he's a Toronto boy. It's pretty difficult to – it's hard to give up on a player that's from the hometown and all of those sort of things like that. But he's making a lot, $10.9 million per year, and 
He's got two more years, and he's got a no movement clause. But at the moment, he can be traded anywhere, which is increases the value greatly. Now, all that being said, he's making a lot of money. There are many that say that he's not worth the money. There's many Toronto Maple Leafs fans that will say that he's not worth the money. Let me know in the comments section. By the way, sup yourself up. Get this fine contact on a regular basis. Hit that sub button. And let me know in the comment section what you think. But I want to say this is a player that at 21 almost had a 100-point season, 94. Then uh, we had the shortened season, some injuries, but he was still kind of on pace to close to 100 points as a winger. This year, he is smoking, man. He's going to be, he, he's heading towards over 100 points and he's shooting a lot more, looking like close to 40 goals. There are only a couple players that have put up those kind of points. Yeah, Kucherov, Panarin, Huberdo, Rantanen, I think, maybe four. So, and those players, a lot of them, I mean, Panarin's already making north of 11. So, it, his value is probably not too far off from where it should be. And you can make an argument he hasn't done anything in the playoffs and blah, blah, blah. Neither has Panarin, right? So it's not as much of an argument. It's not really an argument. The fact of the matter is he's over a 100-point player. They're very rare. His contract is his contract, and it's what it is. Um, so what would why would Toronto want to do this? Well, let's look, first of all, I was just talking about their goaltending problems. Whether or not Jack Campbell works out, and right now he's having difficulties, and so and certainly so is Mrazek, they would have to go get another goaltender or sign Campbell next year. As it stands, I think they have seven, <coughs> maybe, <coughs> excuse me, eight million dollars worth of cap space for next year, and Jack Campbell to sign. Uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, they could let Mikhaev go, I suppose. Uh, Bunting, who is doing very well right now, they're good for next year at 950, but then he's going to have to sign, and he's having a spectacular year. If he has another one, he's going to have to be paid. All of these players are going to have to be paid, and as they are getting paid, you're getting into the same problem of not being able to fill the roster out. The biggest question in Toronto is does this team is this team deep enough to make a deep run in the playoffs? Uh, the defense, like I already talked about, and let's look at the depth chart here. We'll see you've got this beautiful luxury of having Mitchell Marner with Matthews and uh, you know Michael Bunting hitting it out of the park, Tavares, who is you know a point of game center still, even though maybe he might be a little overpaid, and Nylander, who is getting a very good uh, price. You're getting a very good price at for a for almost a point a game winger, and that's another guy that people could uh, talk about trading as well. But we're going to go with Marner. We're going to try to maximize uh, the cap space that we can get and get as many assets. So we can then add more on top of those assets to have t Toronto be a deep team. So let's, uh, okay, now you got Morgan Riley, Timothy Lilligren. Timothy Lilligren is getting better this year. It's not too bad. Uh, Rasmus Sandin is improving like these guys are definitely improving, no doubt. And could certainly be looking at a spot in the future next year or the year after. But the fact of the matter is they're still very young. And when you and uh, if you go into the playoffs with young players like this, quite often it doesn't work out. Veterans in the playoffs are something that are extremely important. So, and Sandine is a lefty. Lila Grin is a right D. And, of course, you have Jake Muzzin as well, who's a right D. Is Lilligan ready for top four build duty as early as next year? Would it not be great to have an actual top four defenseman for this lineup? We're going to look at possibly having, adding to that. As far as depth at forward, 
Uh, Mikhaev, if he does decide to go, you've got Camp, Engvall. Uh, Nicholas Robertson is, is okay, but he, he's not really progressing at a super pace. Spezza could be gone. Simmons is getting up there. This team needs some bottom pairing depth, bottom six depth big time. And I don't honestly see too much of it coming up through the what through the ranks. Uh, Alex Steves was given a shot. He's okay. Uh, Ab- Abramoff doesn't look like he's going to be ready anytime soon. Gogolov was given a shot. He didn't look that great. Like, this is a team that needs bottom six depth, top depth, period. Depth throughout the ro- roster. I believe, tell me if you believe it, and we're going to go see if we can find it and see what it looks like if we do happen to find it with Mitchell Marner. And adding free agents afterwards. Okay, the first team, and this would be a tough trade. This is the reason why they're the first team, because I don't think that's the most likely team. For one thing, it's in the Eastern Conference. Uh, It's in their own conference. It's in their own uh, division, even. And that would be the Buffalo Sabres. Now, I think the Buffalo Sabres would be picking up the phone on a deal like this. I get the impression myself that... The Buffalo Sabres would love to have this rebuild be as quick as possible. Getting a 24-year-old Mitchell Marner, who has 100-point potential that he has, would definitely go in that direction to do that. Now, I know Buffalo Sabres fans, maybe you're out there going, I would love Mitchell Marner. Well, rest for a second, because the package to get Mitchell Marner is going to be extreme. I don't care that he's got $11 million in cap space, and Buffalo certainly has a cap space to fill it in. And that's the reason why Buffalo is on the list here. It's going to cost, this is what I think, to get him, it's going to cost Matthias Samuelson, Jack Quinn, and your first round draft pick this year. Something of that nature. Or you, or you might be able to get away with um, Yoki Haru. Let's say Yoki Haru, a good right defenseman. He is a top four defenseman. He's ready to play right now. Uh, he puts up some decent points. He plays very well. He's not a huge cap hit. We'll say Yoki Haru, Jack Quinn, who they picked up, uh, what, two years ago? And he's injured right now, if I remember correctly. Yes, Jack Quinn. Two years ago, he's 20 years old. He was rocking the AHL before he got injured. Good goal scorer. Guy could replace Marner fairly soon, possibly. And your first round draft pick this year, which we know how huge that is, because that's going to be a lottery pick. Unprotected. It's Toronto's going to need and want huge players that are ready soon prospects to fill in this roster. Now with that, they get about $9 million of cap space in there. They can either sign Campbell, get another goaltender, and maybe look towards adding another piece to their forward or defense group for next year, building some uh, some team depth in Toronto. So they're more secure when they go into the playoffs. And if they have injuries, like we saw against Montreal, that they have players that can play in those spots. I'm afraid this year, if they have those injuries again, they don't have that. And that hap- if that happens, you can see a deal like this. So Buffalo, would you do something like that? Send me another one. I know I've heard people say Victor Olofsson. I don't know what his value is right now, but if Victor Olofsson was in there, it would certainly be, it would almost be like an addition to get Marner in. To get Marner in here. But you would have Marner. You could put Alex Tuck with Krebs and Asplin. Uh, when uh, Gergensen comes back, he can go in there. I mean, you, they, you still have Isaac Rosen coming up. Uh, Matt Murray looked good when he was up. You got Jason Paterka who's getting prepared. You got a lot of still have a lot of prospects that can fill in these holes. Yeah, but you boot, but Buffalo gets to boost their time, shorten their time, I should say on their rebuild, which I think is like extremely valuable for them. It's been 10 years. It's time. Tell me what you think, Buffalo fans, and sub yourself up if you enjoy this content. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Share this around. 
I'll talk to you in the Buffalo uh, Facebook groups about it because I think that's going to be interesting. Next, Arizona Coyote. And here, again, Marner's only 24 years old, Arizona fans, and I know you're rebuilding, but I'm saying Arizona will be in on this mostly because Marner is that superstar type of player that can bring people into the seats, especially when the arena is built. Um, now, it's going. Uh, they could actually possibly get away in this deal without giving up their first pick this year, which I, I, I think it might be a backbreaker, their first this year, possibly. It's possible that they may do it. A hundred uh, over a hundred point player, twenty four years old, to bring people in the seats is possible that they could do it. One thing they wouldn't be able to get away with, though, is Jacob Chikrin. Jacob Chikrin is a left defenseman that can play right. See, he's playing on the right side here. Um, how effectively he is on the right side in the minds of Toronto would be how this deal, if they decide to do a deal like this, because I do believe they would be looking for him to play on the right side in Toronto. But if they feel like he can be extremely effective in doing so, they would be all over it. Now, Toronto fans are going to look at this and say, he's only had 15 points and minus 25 this year. Plus minus doesn't tell you that much. Actually, quite often on a really bad team, a minus 25 just means you're playing a heck of a lot of minutes. Plus minus uh, is more of an indication of the li line that you play on rather than the person uh, over a long period of time, maybe it can show up that you are the reason a little more often than not, but there are better stats than plus minus to tell you that. And Chikrin's uh, stats defensively and offensively are absolutely fantastic. Many think he's going to be a Norris caliber defenseman as he matures. And he's had 41 points the year before, 26 points the year before as a very young defenseman he is only 23 years old he was scoring those points at 21 22 there's a really good chance that Jacob Chikrin is going to get back on that again and Toronto would be all over it and according to Arizona he's somewhat available right now they've let it kind of leak that he's available um, now this deal I believe would happen in the offseason not now uh, they wouldn't be trading him right now but if Chikrin was still available in the offseason I think he would definitely be part of this deal if Chikrin is a guy to go I don't think they have to give up their first in this situation but they're going to have to give up more yet somebody like Nick Schmaltz on the right side to have so they can have a guy to fill up Marner's spot but he's making a little much money wise Barrett Heighton uh go down into your into their Cam Deneen, who was brought up a little bit, he looked like he was a pretty good defenseman. Defenseman Victor Schuderstrom. Not all of these guys at one time, but a package of some of these guys is what it's going to take to bring Mitch Marner over there. But I do believe Chikrin would be high on the list. Tell me what you think, Arizona fans. Would you do a deal like that in the offseason? Bringing in a superstar? I think he's a superstar winner. Maybe you don't. Tell me if you think he's a superstar or not. I think he is. A 100-point-plus player to me is a superstar uh all right next the new jersey devils and the reason why i bring up the new jersey devils here mostly is because they have been talking about trading pavel zaka um i i think they would probably rather add to their defense but it's also very possible that they're going to keep on growing as a defense jonas siegenthaler is still very young he's looking better and better all the time adam graves is a fantastic defensive defenseman that uh, their overall team defense has made him look a little iffy this year, but I still think he's great. And Damon, Damon Severson, as the team defense finds its play way here, I think this defense is going to be okay. And you still got Ty Smith, who right now is getting some time to watch from the seats to maybe gain his confidence up or see the game in a different direction. But he's a fantastic defenseman. So, who would they have to give up? Well, possibly one Ty Smith that I just mentioned. Ty Smith, Pavel Zaka, your first this year. That would be a tough one, wouldn't it? Pavel Zaka and your first this year. Ty Smith. 
I think something like that, and maybe even a little more New Jersey fans, but you're getting one unbelievable winger to play with Nico Heischer, move Brat over to the left here, put Mitch Marner here, or play him with Hughes and bring Mercer down, and you've got a one of the best top sixes in the Eastern Conference are right there right now, and a, and a growing defense to go with it. Just find a goaltender. New Jersey could very soon be a contender. What do you think, New Jersey fans? Are you going to give up that much for a guy like Mitchell Marner? Or am I talking out of my bum? Sub up and come tell me about it on my live stream from 3.30 to 5.30 weekdays. We can talk about this and many other things in the NHL while we do it. Next, this is the second most likely person team I think that would be in there and that is the LA Kings the LA Kings have said that the rebuild is over and you know what they weren't lying because they're in a playoff spot right now now I said I don't believe this deal is going to be at the deadline I don't uh, somebody like this is basically if Toronto misses the playoffs would they consider paring down their forwards so they can get more depth now I'm sure everybody would love Mitchell Marner, but everybody knows that you're also going to have to give something up. I know the one thing they're going to be looking for right now because he's doing so well is Adrian Kempe. And I think LA fans were like, no, no, no. Mostly because fans have an emotional attachment to their players. Adrian Kempe is fantastic. Uh, he is now, what, 25 years old. And he is having a career year with, uh, you know, on a 40 goal pace, but he's never come close to that before. The question is, is he going to be that his whole career? Is this what he's going to be? 26, 27, 28 years old. And even if he is, we just looked at Mitchell Marner's stats. He's on a 40 goal pace and he's a hundred point player. One of the best playmakers in the league. So Kempe really, uh, he's also a restricted free agent. So this may be something that Toronto might not even want to go for because he's a restricted free agent. He's having a big year. He may have to get a big jump here. So they're not getting the savings, savings that I normal they normally that I'm really looking for here. I think it's going to be Archer's Calium, honestly. And I know you guys all love him. But if you're going to pay up Kempe, now Artur, Kavi, uh, Artur Kaviev, Kaliev is going to have to find a spot on this roster as well. And eventually you're going to have to pay him too. But you get, is he ever going to be as good as Marner? I don't think so. Do you think so? You think he's going to be Marner level, 100 point winger level when he's now 20 years old and he's really, he's at 16 points in 53 games. Marner was way ahead of that is way ahead of him in his development at that age. I don't see him as a top 100-point player. And I see L.A. adding next year and becoming a contender very, very soon. They may not have time for Cali up to build up here, and I could see him being part of this deal. I think Toronto would want him, and he would have to be part of this deal. Um, that's not it, of course. It's going to cost more than that. Um, they're looking for a defenseman as well. Maybe a guy like Jordan Spence or Sean Dursey. And I know you guys are already hating it. LA Kings fans, no, no, no. Okay, well, don't take Marner. Seriously, it's going to cost you this much. If you don't like it, if you don't want a 100-point guy that is borderline on superstar status to play with Kopitar and Ayafalo or uh, whoever you want to put him with, then this is what it's going to cost. It's Jersey, Kaliev, and your first this year. Maybe even a little more. Maybe a guy like Jared Dolan Anderson even in there. Uh, maybe a guy that hasn't been panning out for you in Gabriel Velarde. That hasn't really been panning out for a long time. They keep on putting him down to the minors. He's 22 years old. He's not doing bad in the minors. But it's got a lot more iffy if he's going to make it or not. But I think a package like that would get Marner. And I think Marner would make this team amazing sooner than this package would make uh, LA, uh, LA. 
Now, if you're willing to wait it out and see what these guys are going to look like and just build your team that way, then do so. But tell me in the comment section if you would be up for a guy like Marner and would you be able to give up a package like that? And finally, and this would be the most cray-cray one of the bunch, the Colorado Avalanche. The Colorado Avalanche, and the, the, the difference in this deal with the Colorado Avalanche would be that uh, they do not have the cap space at the moment. Um, I want just let me. Uh, I'll look at it later. Also, LA Kings fans, there's a cap space issue possibly there as well. I realize that to fill that 11.5 million in. So maybe another player would have to go in for to make the cap space work. But all those players that I said are going to have to get paid too. I'm pretty sure they can work the cap space. Here, Colorado ha will have a cap space problem. But the reason why I put the co Colorado in is. Toronto would be able to fill their roster with young players and take cap space back in this situation. Who would it be? I think it would have to be. I love uh, I love Michushkin. He's one of the best two-way wingers in the game right now. Most underrated in the league. 29 points in 37 games. Colorado hasn't had a guy with size like this that can play like him for a long time. Um, it's he's so good he may be off the table just because maybe just because of that even for a guy like Mitchell Marner, I don't know though Mitch Marner with Kadri and Landeskog, Rantanen, McKinnon and Burakovsky that is the stupidest top six I mean that, that is absolutely crazy, but it's going to cost you Nichushkin and it's going to cost you Newhook and it's going to cost you Gerard. Crazy, that's a lot. Maybe Toronto would have to give something back to fill it out or whatever the case may be. But a package of Nichushkin, Newhook, and Gerard would definitely get Kadri. And it's possible Toronto sends something back as well to make this even in this deal. This feels like a lot even for me. It feels like a lot even for me. But I think to make the cap work on both sides, Something like this would happen. Now, Samuel Gerard was already talked about possibly being moved, and I don't know if this deal could ever possibly happen unless we they knew that Bowen Byram would be able to play soon. He's had injury issues, but it's not just Bowen Byram. It's also Justin Barron. Justin Barron is looking absolutely unbelievable. In the minors right now and I think it easily take Gerard's spot up there and I think that's the main reason why Samuel Gerard is thought of as being expendable in this deal um, Justin Barron is bigger he's stronger he adds more size to that to that uh, d defense that has a couple of uh, well no actually it would just make it bigger Samuel, just make it big period why not? Big defenseman, right? You could throw Samuel Gerard in there. He's got he's on a good contract for a while. You got a superstar right winger. You got the best top six in the league. Your defense is still probably going to be the best in the league when Barron is comes up and looks like he's available here right away to become a very good player. It just turns your team into an absolute stud. And of course, Newhook is also the one that could be very difficult to add into this deal. Maybe it's got to be JT Comfer. More discussion would be needed for this deal. I've kind of gone over it, over it. I was like, man, I don't want to lose Newhook. But what are you going to do with Kadri? Right? He's got to be re-signed as well. Uh, is, if you re-sign Kadri, where's Newhook land? He's going to be a third liner forever? It's a difficult, it's a difficult thing to, to hash out how... Newhook is going to stay in this lineup down the road. Colorado could be just so darn deep that they could make this trade, and not only would it not hurt them, it would make them basically a huge disappointment to not win the Cup next year. This deal would not happen at the deadline, by the way. It would happen in the offseason. And if they were to do a deal like that, you can't deny that they would be stupid good absolutely ridiculously good 
I don't know how many teams are going to handle that top six. Like, almost impossible. And, if, and when Barron comes up and he can fill that spot with Gerard as good as Gerard, your defense is just as good. Crush. Absolutely crushed. All right. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's what I got for you today. I really wanted to look at that because I keep on getting in my live streams, people asking and asking and asking about, you know, like, what's Toronto going to do? What's Toronto going to do? So I thought, let's think about it this way. What if they do miss the playoffs? What are not miss the playoffs? What if, why do I say miss the playoffs? It's not going to happen. What if they lose in the first round? Is it finally time to make this move? Tell me what you think, boys and girls. In the chat, I'd love to hear from you. Sub yourself up. Hit the like button. Have a great day. Take care.